Hi everyone, thanks for joining and welcome. So, um, in the today's session, I will tell you my personal story, uh, how I came to Inner Source. So, um, I've been active um, in the open source community for, for a long time, and um, at some point, I've asked myself um, why actually people contribute to open source. Yeah, they are, aren't getting paid for it most of the time. So it's not money what motivates them uh, to, to spend their time to write code, to contribute code, and not only code. So looking back now, I realize uh, what drives me personally, and um, I want to share my passion about open source um, in this talk. So one cannot actually describe the feeling um, of an accepted merge request to a project or to a bigger project. Yeah? This pure appreciation by other developers uh, makes you feel so good. And those are mostly people you don't know, you never seen, yeah? and they judge you just by your code and your attitude. And that's what I think people contribute to open source. And the projects know that, I think, and they foster this, 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 um, um, this exchange. So there are also could be other reasons. Um, some people contribute to be a part of something bigger and help build it, you know, some, some big project. Um, for some, uh, acknowledgement uh, is important, or just learning a new technology, like learning a new framework uh, or learning a new programming language. Uh, or maybe acceptance, because really, because no one cares in an open source project how you look like, which skin color you have, or uh, which degree or status you have. The only thing counts is your contribution and your attitude. So let me give you a couple of examples from my personal experience. And for that, I will uh, share my screen and uh, talk to you about a couple of, so this is, should be this. No, it's not this one. Sorry, um, I think it's this one. Yeah, that's this one. So the first story is about um, the contribution we did in the Matrix project. Uh, well, first of all, let me show you the Matrix project. Uh, this is not an uh, advertisement for the Matrix project. It's just a project I'm mostly working on. Uh, in my spare time. So Matrix is a network for secure decentralized communication, more or less chat network. Yeah? So um, we, we, we do uh, like um, a summary every Friday, a summary of what has been done in the project, and we post it in the blog. So the guys post it in the blog, uh, what was done. Yeah? And there is a project uh, called N8N.io, which is a more or less um, workflow automation tool. You can just get, get a, a request from, from GitHub and trigger some notifications in, in Slack or Matrix. So um, the story is uh, very funny. So I will, I will show you the blog um, which we put together. Well, it started that the guys from N8N project uh, they added support for Matrix for, for our project. Yeah? And Matthew, who is uh, the founder of Matrix, who, yeah, CEO of Matrix, um, just noticed that and put it in the news. Like, hey guys, look, uh, someone put support for, uh, yeah, for our mm, chat network. Yeah, exciting, <laughs> yet the saga just follows. Um, well, I've seen that and um, 
I go ahead and uh, try to try it out. Yeah, why not? Go to their project, they have a readme, they have Docker files, uh, Docker images, so you can just Docker run and then you can try it out directly. That's the first thing, which, which is just, you, you, have, you have the documentation to be able to start very fast. Yeah, that's, that's the first thing in an open source project, which is very important. Uh, so I was trying it out and uh, trying to connect to my metric server at home and I was getting like your credentials are not valid. So I did this whole traffic capture and I've seen that they are trying to connect to metrics.org. So um, I posted it in the chat and the guy see, wow, uh, it looks like that, like they hard coded the matrix server in their integration. Yeah, and matrix is distributed network. Everyone can have their home server. So hard coding a server is like a bad idea. Yeah, and um, we were discussing that, how bad this is an idea, and someone was just, well, guys, don't you want to create an issue uh, at the project so they can, like, correct that? And we were like, yeah, hmm, probably we do. And this guy, who is awesome, I never seen him, but I've seen his work, Tuller, who was working, uh, who is also working on the Matrix project, he was like, oh, you know what, I've, I've just fixed that in their code, and I've added it to, uh, to as, a, as a merge request, yeah? And he creates this, <laughs> this merge request fixing the, the code of other guys. Guys do not know each other completely, They're working in different um, time zones, different countries, yeah? And they start to collaborate <laughs> on, this, um, on, this, on this code, yeah? And the discussion starts, and this is actually the owner of, uh, of, of the repository or the maintainer. He was like, whoa, guys, uh, well, <laughs> thanks, first of all. And uh, uh, wow, how did you get uh, so, many, so many thumbs up? Yeah, because the whole metrics guys come, come in there and do the thumbs up. <laughs> and uh, he was like, okay, I will gonna merge it. Yeah, and as soon as he merged it, I, I was testing it. And he was like, okay, next day I will probably uh, release a minor version, a, re a main minor release, uh, including this change. Yeah, and uh, yeah, the story goes, I was testing the new release and saying, that works, thanks, thanks guys. And this was happening like in, in, in 12 hours, like evening and next morning we had a new version with the fix, yeah. Guys were collaborating with each other without knowing them, uh, without knowing each other. And actually, uh, Matthew, he was the founder of Matrix, he gone ahead and uh, explained why it is important to have this kind of things. And, 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 and that was a really great collaboration. If I see it, uh, it was really a great collaboration on this issue, which just fixed it in a matter of Hours, yeah, and this is um, this is um, what you call open source. Yeah, this is how it works. Guys from different, completely different uh, projects collaborate together to put software together. Yeah, and in very positive way. It was such a positive collaboration. It was great. So another example. It's a, it's a bit of smaller one. Uh, it's also about metrics, but <laughs> it's not because I, I want to promote metrics, but because I just just most actively in, in this kind of project. So um, metrics supports uh, kind of bridges. So you can bridge like Slack into metrics. You can bridge Telegram into metrics, and you can use metrics to, to chat to the other networks. And there is also an email bridge. So you can receive emails and you will get messages in, uh, in Matrix. So there was a guy who created this, um, this project, email to Matrix, yeah? And I will start using it for things like newsletter or notifications, yeah? Just don't want to have them in the emails, just uh, put them in, in a chat uh, log. So um, as I started to use it, it was in very, very early de uh, development. Um, and um, uh, I've seen that uh, much is changing, and I don't know which versions I'm, uh, which ver version I'm currently running, and which version is the latest because there were no versioning. Yeah, just very very alpha state. 
Uh, so, oh, you see, there is a versioning right now. So I'm gonna head to uh, the guy who was developing it and ask him, well, can you maybe introduce versioning? Because it's very hard for me to figure out which version I'm currently running. And he was like, you know what? It's my pet project. I don't have any time for that. But feel free to add it for me because uh, um, I, I will not have time to do it. I, I will gladly accept a merge request. And I was like, okay. This is Golang, I want to, to learn Golang a bit. So I Google it on the weekend and ask to myself uh, how, to, how to implement versioning in Golang. And uh, as a result, a smaller one, I've implemented versioning for him. Not only that, I also added a nice ASCII logo. Um, so, um, so it looks a bit nicer. Yeah, there is a information if it's built on dirty state or, or, or a consistent state on Git and the versioning and so on. And he was like, that's nice, thank you very much. And exactly that is what motivates people to do it, yeah? So this, is, this was a very, a very positive moment for me. So, this is um, not the, the only thing. I want to talk about another couple of um, experiences that I have had with, uh, with the um, open source community. And uh, let me see. Yeah. So, and another one is actually the GitLab. Wait a sec, let me. Put up the um, so um, in one company which I, I was working for, we had internal GitLab, um, and uh, we wanted to. It was not an enterprise version, and we wanted to integrate it into Active Directory. So everyone who in, works in the company can access GitLab with their Active Directory cred credentials. Pretty simple. So um, we tried to, to integrate it, and um, it didn't work somehow. Don't know why. And we was like, yeah, well, what should we do next? Well, and I was like, guys, oh, they have a Slack channel, the GitLab guys. Uh, let's try to contact them. Maybe, it will, maybe we'll get some feedback. Yeah, but we don't have an enterprise license. They will probably uh, will not answer and so on. Yeah, what we are losing, let's try it out. So we gone to Slack, ask the guys, hey, we have this version, uh, Active Directory not working. Uh, can you help us? And actually, the developer who is developing this plugin for Active Directory uh, got to us. Yeah, guys, you are running a version with a bug. Uh, please upgrade to the next minor version, and it will be fixed. And he sent us like exact merge request he fixed this thing with. Yeah, and uh, it was in a matter of hours we updated the GitLab installation, and it was just working. Yeah, so we took about two hours. To, from the problem to the complete solution upgrading the thing and works everything. So it was very positive and um, uh, try that with commercial software support. Sometimes it doesn't uh, work as good as that. So, and in general, GitLab um, is a very open company uh, which lives uh, open source and collaboration. Um, GitLab has um, this um, this uh, GitLab handbook, and uh, let me show you that. It's very cool because I like it very much. Um, I will share my screen again. I think it's the right one. So probably, yeah, that's the right one. So this is a GitLab handbook. It's open on the internet, yeah? And you see here values, company values, culture, um, things like uh, hiring process, yeah, um, things like onboarding, offboarding, and much of companies' internal things, which are public on the internet, yeah. So this is nothing new probably, but the thing is, there are maintainers, and this is actually a Git repository. So, as a Git repository, 
you can do a merge request. You can create some, some you can adjust it and you can propose some changes. And that's how they collaborate in GitLab, for example. Someone, if someone wants to um, propose something to change something in a company's um, way company works, yeah, he takes this page, fork it, um, and like fork this repo and creates a merge request with things he wants to change. And in the merge request, there is always a collaboration, talking to each other and talking which uh, things can be taken, maybe some things need to be adjusted. And that's how we, they collaborate on the code. Yeah, and I think this is, this is very, very inspiring that they use um, the Git flow to actually collaborate on company documents. Yeah? Very openly, also open on the internet. So, um, oh, wait a second, let me get back. So, that's um, about examples. Um, and actually, for the last couple of years, I was thinking, well, developers in enterprise context um, do behave a bit differently than in open source. For example, in enterprise context, developers don't really like to show their code you know, most of the time, and uh, they don't don't want someone to contribute, not always. Yeah, and what I've seen also um, measurement of code quality is received um, as if questioning their professionalism. Yeah, is received negatively, and um, documentation is. Mm, somehow outdated or not existent. And as a result of that, the onboarding of new members takes a long time. And this is much different to the open source where developers appreciate code contribution and quality is measured constantly because you never know what developer will sh the other developers' contribution contributors will ship to you. Yeah, you, you have to have uh, this code quality check to be able to understand is this appropriate quality because I have to maintain the code afterwards. Yeah? And also documentation is very essential. As I said, as I told you in the, in the first example, uh, you go to the project, you want to try it out. If there is no documentation, you don't have an idea how to start with it or, the, or how to contribute to it you will not be using it. So, well, you know this feeling uh, when you think, am I the only one seeing this? And um, actually, you know, a, context a context change, um, there is an open source conference in St. Augustine uh, near me, near Bonn, every year called FrostCon. And this year at FrostCon, I saw a talk um, which, which has nothing to do with Inas or with open source or Inas source. Uh, it was called Remote First Avoiding Video Conference Overload by Isabel. And um, she, Isabel, is a part of Inas source community. And this is how I get to know about Inas source community and the upcoming Inas source summit. So at the Inas source summit, uh, this fall, I saw, I saw so many people uh, work before in open source and asking the same questions like, why is it different in enterprise? And the important thing, they had answers. Well, long story short, first of all, there could be a tons of reasons why developers in an enterprise collaborate differently or collaborate less. At, at the inner source commons, you have all the links in the handout. There is a learning path, which is called learning path, uh, which describes the reasons and possible solutions yeah, to uh, kind of um, um, not collaborative um, things. Uh, but I, I want to give you a couple of tips and tricks right, right from the start. And um, let me show you. Well, first of all, 
just pushing your code into a repository on GitHub or GitLab will not work. Yeah, people would not start collaborating because you have to make it easy for people to contribute. And this, um, there, there is a community checklist on GitHub, which I will show you right now. So tips and tricks, yeah. Uh, we use, uh, again, the matrix project, but it could be done for every project. Yeah? There is a community checklist. Is there a description? Is there a readme? Is there a code of conduct? Is there a contributing guide? How I can contribute? What I need to take care of to contribute? Is there a license? Is there an issue template? An issue template is actually a small thing, but it filters out so much garbage in your issue inbox because if your project is popular and you don't have any issue template you will get so much issue um, non non specific issues yeah? and also pull request template did you check your static code analysis did you um, did you write unit tests did you test it on your local installation something like this yeah and uh, well let me give you um, an issue template an example just to just to have a look yeah, loading so yeah code style is correct run some linters pull request is uh, signed off by someone yeah based on develop branch or not some some other branch so those are simple things we, which uh, you can avoid uh, many problems with so and also, uh, I talked about code coverage yeah, and uh, code quality. And this is actually also a very common practice to have code coverage report directly in the merge request because it saves you time to run the code coverage thing and see how, how much tests are missing um, or how much. So it looks something like this. Yeah, This merge request, you can see actually the whole components. You can see that the coverage gone down by yeah zero or three percent, yeah, and this is and this is visible by everyone, yeah, and you can collaborate on that and say ah oh, please write more tests. I can show you uh, the one from my repo, um, which will show you the increase of the test coverage. Yeah, this is the report saying that it were uh, it's eight percent more code coverage. And why? Because yeah, the merge request is write more unit tests. <laughs> um, so it's um, it's pretty handy to have that, to have actually actually the transparency of um, of uh, uh, with the community. So um, well, where to start? First of all, I suggest. Um, reading the book, Getting Started with Inner Source. It's linked in the handout. It's very easy to read. It's only 26 pages long, it's, so it's very short, and provide you the base understanding of inner source principles, which are based on open source principles. And if you have further questions, you can contact me, um, and uh, I can try to answer any questions I can. Uh, so there is a handout and the video of the uh, open source um, uh, of the open source practices and how they are used in other companies. Yeah. So there are also other companies who are uh, starting or already using it for some years. PayPal is one of them. Oh, there's there's a list: PayPal, SAP, Deutsche Bank, and so on. There is uh, actually for financial institutions. There is a group called Finos, where all the banks are there who exchange uh, the uh, like the, the open source software for banking. Uh, so. The next step would probably um, to give a, to to do a kind of workshop, maybe addressing needs of your projects if you are interested in. Um, and I also created a WebEx team space where we can discuss, ask some questions, and maybe plan the workshop. So, and um, as um, uh, Stefan mentioned, there is a survey, Menti survey, 
uh, which Stockman will show you right now. And please take the time to give me feedback. And thanks for listening.